This program is a paid commercial announcement and in no way represents the views of WPHT or its management. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT, WPHT HD, WOGL HD3, Philadelphia. Now, Health Watch, featuring Dr. Molly Fantasia, the PhD doctor and founder of Innovative Medical Associates, with valuable information that could help you improve your quality of life. Now, Health Watch, and your host, John Damasi. Good morning and welcome to the show. As always, a pleasure to have you with us for our Sunday get together. We call it Health Watch. As you heard the man say, for the next hour, we discuss a variety of issues. And all of it with one central theme to help you and your family improve your overall quality of life. And we do that with, as you heard the man say, Dr. Molly Fantasia. She is the Ph.D. doctor and the executive director and the founder of Innovative Medical Associates. Marlton, New Jersey will do the whole thing, the who, what, when, where, why, and how of Innovative Medical Associates and how it can help you. And we'll talk about some patients and some situations. And, of course... We welcome your participation at 855-839-1210. Anytime you want to call in with a question or a thought, 855-839-1210. Health Watch Sundays, 8 till 9, Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. A beautiful day, Dr. Molly, and it's a always a day. good day to get it's healthy, right? It's always a good day to stay healthy, get healthy, and improve your quality of life. We have always talked about what Innovative Medical Associates is and how it's different and what it does and and, and all of that. And still there are questions and people do call you and say, hey, Dr. Molly, so today we're going to talk about the decisions that you and your your medical team make and how you make them and why you make them. But well, let's talk about the basics. Let's talk about hydration. Well, first of all, you know, all of Innovative Medical is a group, a collective of like-minded practitioners, uh, DOs and MDs who have come to me, and and of course, registered nurses, RNs, and of course, all of the rest of our uh, group, have come to us with an understanding that there may be a good way to practice medicine that includes some more things that actually will help a patient's quality of life and do no harm. And sometimes, in many, many cases, it does some good. And it really enhances a traditional outcome. And that's all we want to do. So we can do anything that any other primary care facility can do. You walk in, you need a prescription, you can walk out with the prescription. You need some testing, you can get some laboratory drawn right in our facility. And if you need to go elsewhere for radiology, etc., we can set all that up. So we're very comprehensive in terms of primary care. However, our philosophy differs from a lot of other folks in that we believe that we want to reduce the side effects of a lot of these pharmaceuticals. And the way we do this is with hydration and the delivery of natural substances, that would be vitamins, minerals, amino acids, that we can deliver, and sometimes tinctures, herbs, that kind of thing, that can actually help a patient and reduce the side effects of some medications, you know, because you and I both know, just look at TV, the side effects take up most of Of the commercial, right. (laughs) So it's like you want to help a patient reduce that because lots of patients come to me on a multitude of pharmaceuticals. And interestingly enough, most of our patients are fairly educated. They research the medications they're on and they realize that they're having some of the side effects from the medication and they need some advice on how to maybe reduce those side effects. And I'm not saying just getting rid of the medication. No, I'm saying we can give you some things to help reduce the side effects and actually help maybe effectuate the change the docs are looking for. I guess you could say it's everything that you've come to expect from a primary care facility plus. That's right. I, if we, we truly should be called primary plus. Right. <laughs> we use hydration as, as actually the vehicle by which we're able to deliver these particular natural substances. And why do we use hydration? First of all, hydration is a medical type of action. It is. Hydration. You know, you go into the emergency room, what's one of the first things first they thing do? First thing they do. Hook you right, up. Right. Right. Because lots of people have chronic dehydration, which by the way, has a whole litany of side effects as well. So, and in here in this country, we see more and more of that, particularly coming off of 
Corona, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, yes, we use hydration as the vehicle. So it has been an interesting um, kind of therapy in that we're able to deliver an appropriate dose of the pharma, the, excuse me, not the pharmaceuticals, but the nutraceuticals that can deliver the appropriate response that we're looking for. So the the question then becomes, who gets hydration and what type of hydration exactly. does the patient get? Exactly. Now, I want to tell you, John, there are times I have told people that hydration may not be appropriate. And how did I get to that? Well, of course, I consult with our MDs, our DOs. We sit down. We have a group meeting every week or every every couple of days, actually, looking at what does the patient need. And if there's a way by which we can utilize the hydration to effectuate their change, of course we do it. In most cases, we're able to hydrate someone. And, and in, the, in the hydration, we should also point out that those are your protocols. Those oh, are yes. your, for those who don't know, th- those are your recipes, yes, basically, that's right. right, for a particular condition or challenge. Right. Now, I would like to say that there are some traditional protocols out there but they don't hold a candle to what we do. In other words, the not only is it in the dosing of the nutraceutical, it's in the synergies of what nutraceuticals we use. You've been doing this since you were, what, five or six? No, no, but <laughs> certainly a long time ago, yes. right? Actually, I have a funny story to tell everybody this week. Dr. Molly had a little problem with her ear, or so she thought. Right. She was having a little, not vertigo, but just a little dizziness, the kind that maybe you get on a fishing trip yes. real quick. It was quick, quick response. Yeah, I remember this. I was in right. there that day. Well, I, I thought, yeah. oh, well, what is it? So, of course, my wonderful uh, primary doc who's in our facility, obviously I go in our facility for everything, she sends me to a friend of hers who's an ear, nose, and throat guy. I walk into the office, and he looks at me, and he sees my chart, and he says, you're not on any medication. I said, no. And he said, but you're 73 years old. I said, yeah, well, that's right. And he said, <laughs> oh, and he said, you're that Dr. Molly on 1210. I said, that's right. He goes, I need to know a little more about this. <laughs> okay. I said, okay. I said, so my visit was very uneventful. There was no problem. Little tiny bit of wax out done. So there's a good example of the philosophy that we use. If you need a specialist, we're going to get it for you. If you need to get some medical intervention, we're going to get it for you. Yes. Right? Yes. So I practice what we preach. And then I said to him, hey, you got to meet John DeMassey. I said, because he has some chronic conditions, and we're taking care of that by reducing his needs for med. He goes, yeah, maybe I'll stop in sometime. I said, great. <laughs> see, see, you, it not, was very perplexing right, to him. Right, you're, you're famous, but also no, no, it, it, you, you, pra- you practice what you preach. Well, the point of the right. story is I practice what I pe- preach. And more than that, he's looking at this and he said, I'm trying to think of why you're not on any medication. I'd like to know how old your mom and dad were when they passed away. And I give him the message. He goes, well, I guess it's not really genetic. I said, well, you know, I said, I don't believe we have to be ruled by our genes. Absolutely. We should also tell the story that your mother was a patient. Many, many years. And I remember she left your facility, and she lived in South Philadelphia. Right. And she walked from South Philadelphia to Center City. Yeah. Yep. And that was kind of often that she did that. She she would walk almost every day. Anyway, <laughs> stop for coffee at the old gallery, which is now something else. Exactly. And yeah. turn around and go go back home so yeah and she lived to a ripe old age of 89 yeah so okay. yeah it, it, it's a good thing absolutely more to talk about here on the show coming up on our first break of the morning our show is health watch sundays 8 till 9 talk radio 12 10 wpht dr molly fantasia is here she is the phd doctor and the executive director and the founder of innovative medical associates located in marlton new jersey our number here in the studio, and we always tell you, if you have a question or a thought or a medical challenge, good time to call is early, so you make sure you get into the show. 855-839-1210 is our number here, 855-839-1210. You have a question or you have a medical challenge you want to run by Dr. Molly, this is the time to call in, 855-839-1210. With Dr. Molly Fantasia, I'm your host, John DeMassey. We return more of today's Health Watch after these words. We are back here on Health Watch, and as always, operators are standing by right now at Innovative Medical Associates. And if you want to talk to them, uh, you want to get some information, you want to make an appointment to sit down with Dr. Molly, 
it's like every week when I go in, there's someone who came from the radio. So feel free to call and make an appointment. 856-489-0505. 856-489-0505 is the number. Innovative Medical Associates, Marlton, New Jersey. A lot of good information on the website, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com. InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com. That is the website. And, of course, our show is Health Watch, Sundays 8 till 9, Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. And Dr. Molly Fantasia is here. If you have a question for Dr. Molly right now here in the studio, we are live, of course, 855-839-1210. Dr. Molly, we've often talked on the show about Lyme, and you've treated many, many patients with Lyme disease. And, in fact, I remember several patients that came to you and said, the doctor said we can't do any more for you. Well, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> here's, and here's, here, here we here, go. Here, here, here's the issue, okay? I'm a big believer that there are a lot of myths concerning Lyme disease. We look at Lyme disease from our perspective as a kaleidoscope, meaning it's always changing, right? Kaleidoscopes change when you turn them, and there are many facets to it. So, yes, Lyme disease or the Lyme condition, and in particular the post-Lyme condition, can be very difficult. So, of course, we need the input of physicians who really know that post-Lyme is absolutely an autoimmune disorder. And that's the way our physicians at our facility look at this. Now, I, I... actually put some protocols together for Lyme disease. But we can't take the narrow view. That's the issue. It's not an easy uh, diagnosis to begin with. Many times the lab reports are negative. So clinical picture is very important. And the first thing I say to any patient, have you been treated for Lyme in the past? Did you go to a good clinician and get treated in the past conventionally? And most times they have. But it wasn't until later that these symptoms actually occur. And the symptoms can be very, um, they can vary from patient to patient. But believe me when I tell you, they definitely impede on your quality of life. So this situation with Lyme, why is it that, and I've asked you this before, when they get to a certain point in conventional treatment, they like... Because give. that's the conventional treatment. You eradicate the Lyme. They believe it is a limited infection, okay? And they also, there's a narrow view among clinicians that believe it's not everywhere. But you notice, if you look at the CDC reports, we're in the hotbed right now. Yes. And that includes the city of Philadelphia or yeah. the cities. It's right. amazing because, you know, in the old days, they would say somebody like me growing up in South Philly, oh, you're crazy. Yeah. You don't have Lyme, <laughs> right. right? That's not true. A narrow view is not very uh, good today because those ticks have become rogue. And maybe, maybe it's additional insects that also carry these vectors. We're not quite sure yet. And if you read more and more of the literature, you're going to find that that happens. So here we are. What do we do? So the remaining visits are not related to the persistent initial infection. In other words, the symptoms come back later. For example, you may go in to see your doctor with the fever, the Lyme fever, the, the joint aches, all of the clinical conditions and he believes he or she believes that we got it covered with using IV antibiotics I'm all for that you need that but then you still have these persistent kinds of challenges Uh, joint pains fatigue uh, GI upset and this is just a few of them at that point they generally come in and they feel, as a patient, they come in, they see our doctors, and they feel like, oh, my God, I'm dying. Well, what's happening is the post-Lyme infections have raised their ugly heads. The post-Lyme is worse than the Lyme sometimes, isn't it? I think that's true. I think that's true. And it's interesting. Just because you get on the Lyme, the actual Lyme disease early, doesn't mean you won't have the post-Lyme syndrome because it's those problems that really give us a lot, a lot of trouble. Your approach, of course, is integrative when it comes to Lyme. Yes. But what do you do? What do you do differently? Can you explain, like, how, how does your hydration work to help this whole situation? Well, now, John, you know, 
immediately what I have to do is improve your own what? Immune system. Immune system. Yes. That's number one. But the question is, how do we go about doing it? First of all, we have to look at restoring your immune system, not just re- re- improving it. So in this case, we might have to look at uh, detox. Might be one of the ways we do that, right? We may have to detox from things like mold and some other issues and other toxins, environmental toxins. So we need to look for those, okay? Because having those can impede our ability to to actually restore the immune system. So there may be some testing involved. Now, I don't want people to think that they're going to be with me for the next 10, 20 months. No, we're not looking at doing that. We want to do this as quickly as possible, and we certainly don't want to run tests that may not be necessary. But there are some things we need to let's look at and make sure they're not part of the problem. So we might run some things for the mold, for the environmental issues. Next, we may look at your GI tract. So we might run something for celiac or some variation of that. You were talking about detox, and it reminds people, I guess, of when you hear about drugs and they have to detox a person oh. in order to get them better. No, so I'm same, talking same about, thing yeah, here. Same right, thing, right. but I'm talking about, you know, environmental issues, whether it's mold, et cetera, or toxins. You know, you know how many people come into me with heavy metals that may be right under the limits of traditional laboratory data, right under the limits, but they're suffering from the heavy metals. That might impede our ability to, for example, give you a nutraceutical in the IV that will help detox the liver. If you've had Lyme and you've gone through your protocols, is it an ongoing thing? Is it something that you pretty much have to see you, you know, all the time? Because- It could rear its ugly head at any time again, or how does this work? Well, you hope that you can modulate some of the inflammatory problems and people can go about their daily business. That's the issue. You know, inflammation, as I've told you before, is what? The devil. Good inflammation is necessary, but bad can really cause a problem. So we have to look at co-infections, like I said, co co-conditions that might affect the line so that's the initial issue okay what we want to do at that the next step would be to really look at what we can do to really improve some of the challenges okay for example the aches and flu-like symptoms that happen the severe pain muscle stiffness that might be there the fatigue how about the skin problems? I saw a patient just recently whose skin problems were related to a post Lyme infection. It's crazy. So, you know, that each one of these kinds of things have a little different protocol. There are some basic things in the Lyme protocol, okay? Like we're going to use glutathione. We're going to use your old friend vitamin C. But again, I might want to use certain other things that maybe work on cytokines So there may be some neuropeptides used who work on specific inflammation markers. You know, it's it's so interesting because every time you talk about something, and and we're talking Lyme and post-Lyme here, you always add something else, and I say, well, "Gee, I didn't know you did that. I didn't know you did this." So it's it's always something new that you've added because you're always looking and you're always doing yeah, some different things and, 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 to help. Right. And here's the thing. Suppose a patient comes back and they are positive, absolutely positive for heavy metals, meaning they're above even the normal reference range, which, by the way, they move up all the time so that somebody doesn't really, quote, unquote, have heavy metal poisoning. Okay. But they have an elevated level. Well, guess what? That impairs the detox uh, pathway. So what do I have to do? We've got to get rid of the, the metals. What is that? Chelation. That's right. That's chelation. Everybody knows we use EDTA, DMPS, you name it, depending on what we're looking for. So here we go. How about we have to look at things like the mold? We may use a different protocol entirely for mold conditions before we actually get into some of addressing some of the other issues which I spoke about. But again, what are we looking to do? We're looking to improve the quality of life for a patient. Absolutely. And and again, is it something that they will pretty much have to be seeing you 
Well, for a period of time, I would say that generally we're looking somewhere between 20 and 30 treatments. And so that could be as little as 15 weeks, which is not a whole lot of time. When you talk to these Lyme patients, they have been through absolute Hades. They have. They really, they say that it has impeded so much of their quality of life. It's unbelievable. And you know what else? They're really frustrated because conventional medicine says now it's in their head. Yeah, I believe it's in their head, but I believe it's the post Lyme. Yeah, the, the, it's a problem. It's a big problem. It's a big problem. It's you, a big you, problem. You remember, I had a young man yeah. who just came in. You, you, you remember the, uh, the the late singer Al Alberts? Yes. Yeah, Al Alberts used to work with, where I was with the radio station, he used to work with us, and he didn't feel good for two years. I believe And that. he said to me one day, he says, you know, it's been two years, and I finally found out what the problem was. He he went to, he said, I went to 30 different doctors all I over. believe it. And finally one told him you got Lyme disease. Right. <laughs> Two right. years, right? Right. So there you go. Right, because sometimes the traditional testing doesn't, doesn't pick it up. Doesn't detect so it, yeah. you know, you really got to have a good doc who looks at the clinical picture. Look at the total terrain. And why do I say that? It's it's what we look at all the body systems. We are coming up on our halfway point of the show, which means you still have plenty of time to call in, and we encourage you to do that if you have a question for Dr. Molly, or if you have a medical challenge you want to run by her. Feel free to call in right now. 855-839-1210 is our number here in the studio. 855-839-1210. Our show is Health Watch, Sundays 8 till 9 here on Talk Radio 1210. WPHT, Dr. Molly Fantasia is here, the PhD doctor and the executive director and founder of Innovative Medical Associates, Marlton, New Jersey. Again, the number 855-839-1210. We're coming back with more Health Watch, today's edition, after these words. Welcome back to Health Watch. Operator standing by right now at Innovative Medical Associates. And you can contact them by calling 856 489 By the way, that's the number for Innovative Medical Associates during the week as well. So if you want to call during the week, that's the number. But you can call right now. You want to get some more information and you want to set up an appointment with Dr. Molly. Like I said, it seems like every time I go in now, we have new people coming in and talking to Dr. Molly about what she does and how she does it. 856-489-0505 is the number. Innovative Medical Associates, Marlton, New Jersey. And remember, the website, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com. And don't forget our Health Watch replay this afternoon, 4 until 5. It's today's show, this afternoon, 4 until 5, right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Health Watch is our show, Sundays 8 till 9, our live version. And we're going to go to the phones right now and talk to John and Cherry Hill. John, good morning. You're on with Dr. Molly. Hey, John. Good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Dr. Molly, uh, I have a Grover's disease. Okay? Grover's, yeah. And okay. For a couple of years. And uh, I, I use a triamisolone ointment, okay? It's an ointment that I spread. And also okay. uh, an alcohol 12%, okay? And also okay. an over-the-counter anti-itch. Okay. But, um, is there any other, and, and my back sometimes, it, sometimes it's pimply, and well, it is pimply, and uh, it itches. I could go maybe three weeks itch, two weeks no itch. Oh, boy. Is there any remedy for that? Yeah, I think you would do very well on an IV of alpha lipoic acid. I think you would do very, ALA, I think you would do very well on anything that would uh, be a... Um, a blocker for particular proteins that are going on for you. Are you? Who, what kind of physician are you seeing right now for this, my friend? Dermatologist. Yeah, the derm. Okay. Have you thought about possibly making sure that your endocrine system is up to date and everything else? No. Endocrine. Never mentioned anything of that nature. Uh, well, I would definitely look at that, but I certainly would look at NAC. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you something. If you call my office, I, I will, uh, A, I'll, uh, I, where, where are you? You're in Cherry Hill, right? You're going to a local yeah. derm there, local derm. Is he an expert yeah. in this? Yeah. Is he the expert in this? Good. You like him. Good. Continue to do it. Okay. Listen. There's no cure, no solution. I agree with that. I agree okay. with that, and I, we know it's autoimmune in nature for sure. But I definitely, definitely would look at something that would 
I mean, orally, that might block certain uh, inflammatory interleukins. This might be something to do. We could do that with tincture, but I would prefer to do it with a short course. And when I say a short course, maybe four to five uh, hydrations with some of these things in there. Come on over and see me. Also, I might want to use, um, I definitely would want to use whatever I could to uh, particularly work on phase one and phase two of the liver detoxification pathways. So, um, yeah, give me a call. It's, it's, it's very heartbreaking to have this, I know. So give me a buzz, buddy. Sometimes it itches. Sometimes, sometimes I'll go maybe two, three weeks without itching at all. But I, yeah. I use this cream, the ointment faithfully, and Good. that helps. Uh, Good. As I yeah. say, I believe very much in conventional treatments. When you need them, you that, need them. That's right. But, that's you right. know... I still believe there's total, there's inflammation going on there, and it would be nice to get that under control in a more natural way. So, yeah, call the exactly. office. John, I'd love to see you. Exactly. No, no charge. Excuse is, me, is, sir? Is Grover's, is Grover's symptomatic of anything else? Well, it depends. I would <clears> want to see the patient, and I want you to come in and see one of my physicians at the same time. Come on. Yeah, you, you really can't diagnose no, that. No, I can't, right. I'm not a diag- right. you, you, diagnostician. You, you, I'm working John, on your thanks symptomatology. For the call. Very nice. Thanks for the call, John. Appreciate it. Good luck with that. That's a good call. Yes, he 855-839-1210. That's our number here. And Dr. Molly has plenty of stories, and I know you wanted to share this story because it goes to kind of the philosophy of... Exactly what I just what said to you, this nice young man. Exactly. So it right. goes to this philosophy. So tell the story. Well, the story is, you know that I have a wonderful sister uh, of uh, a Franciscan sister, which is a Catholic order, who comes to me. And she's a great gal. She's been with me for many years. And she was referred to me by a breast surgeon who we have a relationship with. So right there, you know... We encouraged her to take the lump out. I also took her up to see my oncologist up in New yeah. York, you know, who's also a great guy. And we put together a plan for her. But in the last week or so, I find out that she hasn't been to a gynecologist in over 20 years. Now, that's not unusual, particularly for a sister. She just doesn't see the need for it. Well, <laughs> I said, listen, sister, I think it would be prudent after you have a diagnosis of cancer breast cancer there's estrogen usually involved and i think he really should get to see the gyn well lo and behold we sent her to one she goes and he finds that she has a problem with her endometrium which is the lining of the uterus so he's saying that well i don't think it's another cancer i do think it's a little thick i would prefer to do a DNC. So she said, let me go home and think about it and I will call you back. He said, that's fine, sister. I will get you on the schedule. It's not urgent, but it should be done. So she comes home, she calls me and what happens is she goes through the scenario and I told her, listen, sister, go get it done because estrogen is involved. We are doing everything we can from a holistic point of view to reduce her estrogens, right? We're using indole 3 car- carbonyl. We're using vitamin C. This is all part and parcel of our cancer-supportive treatments. And we're doing very well because she's been doing very well, not another lump or not another cancer outbreak. But this is a good case to say, what do we believe in? Integrative medicine, meaning integrate the conventional Western medicine, surgery if needed, and what do we do then? We give you the supportive care to get you through it. She goes, well, I feel so good. I said, that's great. Let's thank God. She said, every day. Because she's coming in and getting her her treatments, right? Her her, her hydration And I said to her, don't worry. I'm going to have you back in the pink in a day or so. She says, well, I don't want any downtime because i got to keep praying. And I said, I got you. No problem. So that's the story, folks. And she's a wonderful gal, and she prays for all my patients. And whether they're they're in the chair or not, and also 
for the rest of us, and thank God she does. Yeah, I, I enjoy when she comes in because I say, oh, I feel good. Yeah. I say, you're sitting next to me. I, I feel like I'm going to have a good day and a good week. Yeah, I think that's probably true, <laughs> right. John. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so, so it just it, it goes to show that your philosophy is you don't ignore conventional. No, you You, definite, you work I, with listen, it. Listen, I have conventional physicians that are there. So we know what we're doing. We just have a philosophical difference that we don't want to load a patient up with medications that maybe we can help or if we need to use multiple medications we can use the least amount necessary to help correct the problem by augmenting this with the hydration and as you said earlier when you see these drug commercials more than half the commercial is the disclaimer of what it could lead to if you take (laughs) now you know what else john i want to talk a little bit about health food products because people think you can get all of this orally. Just this week, I'm going through uh, my emails, and I get an email. Of course, we were on the FDA watch list all the time. The FDA pulled another product off the shelf. Now, listen to this. It was adulterated with an unclaimed drug. And what kind of product is this? For men's health. Yeah. It's for ED. Yeah. Yeah. And you and I talk about your particular issue 15 years ago or 10 years ago. Yeah. Look what's happening today. Yeah. This thing had had remnants of the blue pill in dosing that was higher than is given to people. It must have come in from China, but they pulled it off the health food store shelves and through the Internet. So, again, I want to caution people. Look at your supplements. And believe me, they come into me with bags and bags full. You know, the, the, the men's uh, health stock is ripe for that kind of thing. Of course it and is. And you got to really be careful. Absolutely. And in particular, given the comorbidities of the heart disease and hypertension and, you know, all the rest of it, guys, you got to really look at this stuff. Please don't take anything. We're non judgmental. Bring it in. Let us look at it. We'll tell you whether it's any good or not. Okay, we're coming up on our final break of the morning, which means you still have time to jump in with a question or a comment for Dr. Molly, or you have a medical challenge you want to run by her. 855-839-1210 is the number, 855-839-1210. Our show is Health Watch, Sundays 8 till 9, here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. With Dr. Molly Fantasia, I'm your host, John DeMassey. We return more of today's Health Watch after these words. Welcome back to Health Watch want to tell you that operators are standing by right now at Innovative Medical Associates, and they'll be there well after we leave you at 9 o'clock this morning. So if you want to give them a call, 856-489-0505. Probably the best thing you can do if you've been listening to the show for a long time, you say, I wonder if that can help me. Best thing you can do, make an appointment for the initial consultation. It is complimentary, and then you can go from there. It's pretty simple. 856-489-0505 856-489-0505 is the number. And the website, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com. Our show is Health Watch, Sundays 8 till 9, Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. Let's talk to Lana in Cape May. Lana, good morning. Welcome. You're on with Dr. Molly. Good morning, Dr. Molly and John. Hey, good, good morning. <laughs> good morning, morning Lana. You're, you're, yeah. you're relaxing out there in Cape May. God bless you. Oh, well, we're actually in Philly for we okay. have some doctor's appointments. And good, the, and good. And Rich and I will be in on Tuesday for you our, got it. Our, you, uh, our tune-up. I call them tune-ups, you know. I think that's uh, great. I think that's great. Yeah, well, yeah. you know you know what? Now, you know how I feel. Go ahead, honey. Go ahead. Now, Dr. Molly, I have a question. Um, uh, this, uh, the, this virus, and uh, I know that I keep... Uh, my immune system pretty well in check because yes. I found yes. you. I found Thank you. God. And you were an answer to my prayers. I told you on my way to Margate one day, I tuned <laughs> in to 1210 Talk, which is my favorite station. Good. And there you were sing, uh, singing my songs. And <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm my, I have a question about um, uh, keeping your immune system in check right. by... Right. All the things you can do uh, right. versus getting the vaccine for people who have problems with vaccines Correct. And, or choose Correct. not to. What is your what is your view on that? Dr. OK, Molly? I have a view on that. And let me tell you what it is, Lana. OK, you know, you and I are riding the to- tune of non-conventional mindset. 
yes, yeah. we need to have our immune system tuned up. And if you suffer for some things like cancer and some chronic autoimmune diseases that are pretty terrible, meaning, you know, uh, maybe some of the viruses, this kind of thing, you've got to be careful. And if you've had a reaction in the past to the vaccine, you want to be careful. Now, as far as the vaccine, if I were doing the vaccines, as you know, I'm working on getting the J&J, and I spoke to the state yeah. almost every week. Because J&J's technology is a little different than the other ones that are out there. Uh, you know, my belief is that it, the J&J may work as well as the two-dose on people who have tuned up their immune system. I think that's the key. You need your immune system working at an optimal level. So whether you decide to do the vaccine or not, and, you know, all the boohooing about the J and J not being as effective. So what? If your immune system is where it is, my belief is the J and J will be effective for you. So here's the deal, Lana. You and I both know you can't work at the hospital without it. You can't work in a lot of of outpatient settings without it. I mean, it, it, it's a little tough. Yes, if you choose not to, you better have a good reason. I think, and I think you're right that autoimmune counts as a good reason. So that's my yeah. belief on it. See, the problem is we're really highly regulated to get it. It's yes. like you can't walk around without your mask, without it. That's why I'm pushing so hard to have the J&J &J in stock for my people. And believe me, you know, my nurse Barbara's been on the phone with them since the beginning to get it, and we were not relegated for it. Now all of a sudden they're saying, well, we should be in the top ten. I don't know. You know, they don't they don't particularly look at our clinic as a real clinic, although I don't know why we have a clinical license, as <laughs> yeah. you know. Yes. So it's like, you know, they, yeah. they you know, you know, politics, you know what I'm saying. And I don't want to uh, run a foul of that. Right. No, so no. I think you, you have to you be extremely careful. Well, I love you. But, you know, we also have to watch. You yourself have to watch. The good news is you are a registered nurse. You know the downside. And I say let's respect that in my people. Let's respect it, but let's keep up our immune system. You know, bottom line, you're right. Lana, thanks for uh, yeah. for jumping in here and, 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 and talking bless to you. us. And, and giving us a little boost this afternoon. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, thanks for the call and say hi to Rich and yeah. say hi to Lucky. For oh, me. yes, absolutely, <laughs> our little Lucky. Thanks. Lucky thanks. is her dog. Okay, yeah, for those yeah. who don't know. Thank you. All right. Thanks, 855 Lana. 855-839-1210 is our number. A couple of minutes left of the show if you want to jump in with it a question. It was a good question. Yes. It, it was a good yeah, question. Yeah, it, and, it is a question. And, and here's the thing. Uh, in talking about uh, situations – and talking about uh, immunities and boosting your immunities. Right. You have so many cancer patients, unfortunately, but fortunately you're helping them. And your protocols are are built to keep Assist. their immune system up right. because exactly. of all the, the exactly. stuff that they're Including going the traditional uh, chemotherapies right. and the radiation therapies. And here's a good example. You know, it's sort of similar. Yeah. Okay. They're going to choose to do conventional treatment. And I applaud that. I want people to be around. So, you know, you have to use your head, even with the vaccine. If you're in a place that's going to have people, a massive amount of people that you don't know, and you don't know how, how, how this, you know, we don't know if they're coughing in your face or whatever, right? Yeah, maybe you need the vaccine. Maybe if you have certain autoimmune issues, you need the vaccine. But you know, bottom line is we ought to respect people's right to do whatever they want. That's right. And that's, that's right. where I am with cancer, as you know. Too. Yeah. Well, well, you've often talked about this and you, you've often talked about how you continue to keep their immune system going. Exactly. And I think for me anyway, that's been terrific in this whole you know, pandemic oh, situation. Yes, of course. Because of course. I never I never really worried about it because I figured. And I didn't do much to to, right. to challenge right. it, but but I figured that you know the immune system was pretty good right. because of my treatments right. that I get exactly. twice a week. Exactly, exactly. And I'm hoping that that's true for everybody. But remember, John, when you have comorbidities, 
your immune system is always in overdrive. That's the key. So to keep it up, you have to come in a little more often. So, you know, if you're one of these guys that comes in once every three months or whatever, I want you to make sure you're, you know, you take care of yourself in that in that regard, in everything, in everything. Which is why you said to me, listen, I want you to go twice a week. I used to go exactly. once, now I'm twice. Yeah, well, we had some changes. Right. And, and the bottom line is, look, the body's always in motion until we die, right? Your cells are moving in motion until the day we close our eyes forever, take our last breath. So the object is... We want to make sure that that immune system is working at the highest and best level that it can. As you've often said, you said those patients who come to you who do only the non-conventional and those patients who do only the conventional, uh, you do believe in a mix. Exactly. The ones that are around are most those likely are, the ones that do the mix. Exactly right, especially as it concerns cancer treatments. There is no question. You know, and I'm a big believer that we do what we have to do. And, you know, I have some patients who choose not to do anything. You know, like Lana's saying, she doesn't want to take the vaccine, I believe. That's okay with me. I have no problem. I'm certainly not going to say don't come in. I'm not going to do that. We're going to follow all the rules. But the bottom line is this. In the end, your health care, you must be your own advocate. And that's really what I put out. Be your own advocate. Take in all the information. Digest it. Most of the folks who come in to see me are very intelligent people. You've often said that to me. And we had an issue a couple of years ago with the cardiologist that, you know, the statin drugs. Oh, yeah. And you said, look, you got to take control of this. And and every one of them finally, finally, two weeks ago, he puts me on a A new one. A new one. That's a non-statin. Right. That makes sense. Uh, two years, but I had to keep saying no, 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 no. Right, because you knew what you felt like, exactly. and we didn't want you to be on it. Yes. And, you know, the idea is you're keeping your cholesterol in check. You're watching. Here's the thing. If you do all the right things, you can have a healthy aging. And there are various things you need to do, and supplements are very important. And with that, we're going to put the wraps on another edition of Health Watch. Don't forget, operators standing by. Right now at Innovative Medical at 856-489-0505. And they'll be there well after we leave you at 9 o'clock this morning. 856-489-0505. If you missed any of our show, we have our Health Watch replay from 4 until 5 this afternoon here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. That's going to put the wraps on this edition of Health Watch for Dr. Molly Fantasia and everyone at Innovative Medical Associates. The lovely Linda. Barbara, Delightful D, Fabulous Fran. We have Joanne and our nurses, Jess and Crystal, and our medical assistant, Chatty Cathy. I'm your host, John DeMassey. Thanks for listening. Have a great week and a healthy one. We'll do it all over again next Sunday. Health Watch, 8 till 9, Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. You take care.